proud is it your misfortune and not my own. Hit I high, get along, you little doggies. You know that the ferry will be your new home. And now for the thrilling adventures of Lightning Jim. The discovery of gold in the Black Hills brought many prospectors and settlers into the region which had long been acknowledged as Indian territory. And several chiefs of the Sioux tribe had taken their braves on the warpath, opening hostilities whose zenith of horror was achieved a few years later in the hideous massacre of General Custer and his men. Lightning Jim and Whitey are now on the trail of the local agent who is contacting the Indians and effecting the sale and delivery of forbidden firearms. The mission is one of the most dangerous that the two marshals have ever attempted. And as they ride across the rolling plains north from Fort Laramie. He like him. How long he figured it'll be before we hit hostile territory? Well, according to the soldiers back at the fort, we done hit it, Whitey. I tell you, Lightning, the further we go on this job, the lesser I like it, my God. Like sure, it. think a whole heap of that toe-headed scalp of yourn, don't you, Whitey? Yo, I certainly do think a lot to my scalp. And uh, my scalp's kind of attached to me, too, <laughs> by God. Like. Hey, Whitey, take a look at that skyline ahead. Move oh, easy, son. Oh. Easy, boy. Yo, Lightning. A couple of redskins about a mile ahead. And right down the tree or two. Hmm. Might be just as well to veer east a bit till we get around them. Oh, no, we won't. Look over that ridge to the east there. Two more, but gosh. And three of them directly west of the trail, too. Looks like it's cloud enough for trouble, Whitey. Yo, but there's none of them behind us, Lightning. Maybe we could make it back to the fort. Yeah, but we ain't gonna try, Whitey. Up, Thunder. Wait a minute, Lightning. You're keeping right on the trail. We'll run right into the first tree and this way. Come along and don't argue, boy. Look, they're giving ground. Oh, then you think they were trying to drive us into ambush? Yeah. And making it look like the trail was open behind I'm us. I'm sure of it, Whitey. If we'd gone the way they wanted us to go, we'd be nothing more than a couple of dead hombres in no time. They look like him. They disappeared from sight. I bet you they're hiding along the switches ahead so they can shoot us when we pass through them. I reckon you're right, Whitey. Can't turn back now. The others get us sure. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey, I think I see one like him. Where? Over to the right there. Yo. Get a chance to get back to the trading post. Quick. Yo. Yo, but look. Look behind us. Those others are closing in on us. Holy smoke, Whitey. There must be 15 of them red devils now. Right, Whitey. Right for your life, boy. Let's go, boy. Let's go, boy. Chief War Cloud. Huh. Dog gun you, Indians. You move like cats. Well, what do you want? War Cloud, come trading post, get gun. Well, you're wasting your time then, because I ain't going to sell you no gun. War Cloud Brave need gun, need powder, need bullet, much bad. You got sell to War Cloud. I don't got to do nothing. I told you I promised Chief Buffalo all the guns and ammunition I had on hand. Yeah. War Cloud Brave have much cold. We'll pay much gold for gun, bullet, powder. Hmm. Well, it's true that I promised this stuff to Buffalo Calf. But if you're willing to raise the ante, well... Hold on there. There's a covered wagon pulling up. You gotta go now, War Cloud. Come on back later, we'll talk about it then. And maybe we make, make a deal. Come on, get out quick. Out the back way. Uh, War Cloud, be back. Hey, where do you think you're going, Ed? Why, uh... I'm just uh, going into the trading post for a minute, Marty. Well, don't be long. You got to mend this broken yoke bow, you know. Well, howdy, stranger. Yeah. Where'll yours be? Say, you're a Rappahoe Joe, ain't you? Yeah. Well, my name's Snodgrass. 
Absalom Snodgrass. <clears throat> I want to buy a couple of good buffalo robes if you've got them. Buffalo robes, huh? Sure, I've got them. Genuine winter skin. Engine cured and the best money can buy. The best, huh? That's good. Lucky Ab don't buy nothing but the best. And why? Because he can afford the best. That's why. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you want for them? Well, seeing as how they're prime hides, I ought to get, the, well, $15 a piece for them. $15, huh? Oh, seems kind of steep. But I can afford it. Got some scales handy? Oh, gold dust, huh? Big coke of it. Must have been prospecting and struck it rich. Rich? <laughs> I'll say I'm rich. Got more than 5,000 in nuggets and dust out yonder in that wagon. And I'm going back for more as soon as them infernal redskins get settled down. Ed, Ed, some snuck, Ed. Whatever took you so long? Oh, so you got some buffalo robes, huh? Thought I told you we could make out by sleeping in another set of flannels. How much you pay for them? Uh, uh, $15, Ed. Uh, your wife would take it, huh? His wife, of course I'm his wife. Whose wife would I be? $15, huh? Well, that ain't a bad price for two good soft hides like these be. Uh, but, uh, you, you see, my dear, it, it ain't $15 for, for both hides. It, 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 you, you mean you paid $15 a piece for them, Skin? Why, you long-eared, grass-eating toad pony, you? Why, why, what do you mean throwing our hard-earned gold around that away? No, 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 no. My mother, dear, you said there was fine hides. Well, and, I didn't and... say it was worth the weight in gold, did I? Now, you listen to me, Axe. Uh, now, just a minute, And for you, you thieving shopkeeper, you... I'll thank you to give my man back every grain of that gold dust before I lose my temper. But I ain't got your husband's money, ma'am. He ain't paid me yet. You see? I was just fixing to weigh up the dust when you stepped in, my Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Now, come on. Get to work on that yoke bow. Uh, but, ma'am, I was just fixing to say that... Well, I, I might let you have them robes a little cheaper since... We ain't dealing with no highway robber like you'll be at any price. Get along, Ed. Well, girl. Uh, howdy, stranger. You be the owner of this wagon outfit? That's me, mister. Absalom Snodgrass, the name. Lucky Ab, they call I'm me. I'm the yeah. one you got to deal with, stranger. What do you want? Well, I seen your tracks on trail back yonder. Saw you was traveling alone. Thought maybe as how you might like to hire a guard and engine fighter, ma'am. Uh, guard, engine fighter. You? Why, you're that old, you couldn't fight a tied calf. Besides, there ain't been a smell of engine trouble between here and the fort. Maybe not, ma'am, but just today I've seen a band of Arapahoes wearing wall paint. Fought more than 15 miles back, and I've seen Sue and Cheyenne to the west of here. Is, is that so? Yeah. Well, uh, Marty, maybe we'd better hire this guy. Oh, this old scalper ain't taking me in, none of us, not this. Why, it's as plain as a nose on your face that he's just trying to scare us so he can make some easy money for himself. Now get along with you. We got work to do. Look out where you're going there. Oh, 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 come to the wall, boy. Hey, why, what happened? Well, you better give me slice in the head. I got it. They're thrown by my clothesline. That's what happened. Oh, oh, now look at my clothes all over the ground. <laughs> well, ma'am, as long as you're looking at your clothes, you are safe. But you'd do me a great big favor if you'd turn around till I can locate the seat of my pants. The seat of your pants, gone? Well, don't you dare turn around, young man, or I get in my way. <laughs> now, maybe you'll invest in that inner line, and I advise you to buy Whitey. Oh, you see, right? ma'am, Whitey's had trouble with the seat of his britches before. Yes, no, 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 listen here, Lightning. Don't well, if it. my old eyes don't deceive me, it's lightning, Jim. And Whitey, too. Yeah, get how about you that? Order. Old Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. What's well, yeah. doggone you, Henry, old soul? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Oh, good to see you. All right, yeah, Well, you three may be old friends, but this ain't lodge night, and I'll thank you to move out of the way so I can get my clothes picked up. <laughs> well, see, now, I was only <laughs> fooling you about my britches, ma'am. They're still all in one piece. Here, I'll, I'll help you pick these clothes up. Doggone them in, you see, anyway. Engine? You see engines? Seen them. Well, ma'am, up to a couple of miles from here. Fifteen of them red devils were tailing us so close they had a range. Yo, and if you know anything about Indian shooting, ma'am, you'd know that was pretty close. And now you see, Marty, he was right. The old fellow wasn't lying none about the Indian. Well, do I get the job? Oh, you have to job his guide for this outfit, eh, Kentucky? Yeah. Just what he is, and as far as I'm concerned, he's got it, too. Uh, not so fast, there, Ed. How do we know this big bone rack knows anything about redskins? How to fight them and all Listen, ma'am. Old Kentucky is one of the most famous Indian scouts the U.S. government ever had. Why, if it hadn't been for his teaching me some of the tricks of them savages, 
My deputy and me would have just rode into one of the neatest little ambushes ever planned. Oh, if that's Redskins, you're up again. You can bank an old Kentucky keep you out of trouble, all right. Well, I reckon as how he must be all right if you two vouch for him, seeing as how your badges show your marshals. Well, the charge be. Well, being as I was headed down towards the fort anyhow, I can afford to let you off right reasonable, ma'am. How much? Well, I reckon thirty dollars would be a fair price. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars? Yes. Why, I never heard of such a price. I'll give you fifteen and not a cent more. Thirty dollars is my price, ma'am. But, Morty, this ain't no time to be so saving. Doggone it, them buffalo hides may not be worth the price, but our own hides be. Ever seen a body that's been carved on by Arapahoes, ma'am? Mm. I'll give you twenty dollars, old man, but I'm warning you I won't go no higher. I'll settle for twenty-five. Taken. I'll pay you myself, Dagnabbit. I ain't going to risk my hide for no measly five dollars. All right, Abs, not grace, but that five dollars comes out of your tobacco money. And when you're honing for a smoke, just remember it's what you get for interfering when I'm driving a bargain. So you're gunning for the owl hooter what's been supplying guns to the engines up this way, eh, Lightning? Yep. And I don't mind telling you, I'm expecting plenty of trouble on this job, too, Kentucky. Oh, shit. Are you two going to talk all night? Hey, White is right, Landon. You'll be traveling through bad territory tomorrow, and a good night's sleep may stand you in good stead. Yeah, I reckon that's so, Kentucky. Yeah, Whitey. We'll spread our blankets over here. Hmm. I wonder what that engine was doing here. Indian. Where? Where's any Indian? You can't see him now. Just left the trading post by the back way. One of Rappaho Joe's customers, I reckon. Nothing to get head up over, only uh, I wonder what he's doing over here so late. Yeah. Hey, I was looking that way all the time, and I didn't see nothing. Just the shadows from those cottonwood trees. Well, I reckon most folks wouldn't have seen that redskin, Whitey. But when you've been dealing with the breed as many years as I've been, you learn the difference between shadows that sways back and forth and the ones that kind of oozes along. Them last kind is injuns. Well, Kentucky thought you wanted to hit the hay. I do, but that dreaded, I don't like engines no how. Well, good night, boys. Good night, Kentucky. Oh, sleep good, old timer. Whitey. Whitey. Whitey, wake up. Get, get shaking me. Come on. Get, get shaking me. Well, wake up then. I got something to tell you. Oh, lightning. I need my sleep back down. We can't just wait until the morning. No, it can't wait. Listen, Whitey. I was talking around worrying about that Indian Kentuck saw coming out of the trading post. And all of a sudden, I noticed a light in there. Couldn't figure out why Arapaho Joe would be up this late. So I decided to have a look. See. You're early. What did you see? Plenty. At first, I couldn't see a sign of nobody in the room. And all of a sudden, I saw a trap door open in the floor. And Joe come up out of it. Oh, well, what did that do? Not the place is a storeroom's underneath the floor. Yeah, but Joe was so careful about pulling the cougar skin over the opening that I think he's even anxious for no one to know the storeroom's there. Oh, then you must think maybe your support get that supplying the guns to the Indians, huh? It's an interesting possibility, Whitey. Oh, that's so. Old Kentuck told us that you was like Texas and Seventh with the Indians. Yeah. Now, come on, Whitey. Joe left for the back way, took his horse. From the way he went, but you and me are going to have a look below that trap door before he gets back. Don't know, right, Lightman? Yes. Hand me down the lantern, buddy. Oh, sure. Uh, there you are. Remember, keep your eyes glued on the back door, buddy. See or hear anything, stop the trap door and get out of sight. Sure, I do that, like then. All right. I like this lantern. There. But how the coyotes? What's the matter, like then? Are the guns down there? Guns? I'll say there are. Plenty of them. Oh, uh, must be 15 to 20 cases of them. Gunpowder, too. Several barrels of them. Even some dynamite. Run them up, Marshal. What's the trouble, Joe? I got you covered, love, Ed. And I ain't afraid to shoot either. So don't try any false moves. But Whitey, what'd you do with Whitey? He's right here beside me, Marshal. Oh, I didn't hurt him much. Just choke him a bit. Now turn around and face the wall, Mr. Lightning Jim Whipple. I am coming down. Well, 
You got to drop on us this time, Lambo Joe. We'll have you tied in a hemp knot before we are finished. Never hear the saying, dead men tell no tales. Dead men, eh? They're going to kill us. Is that it, Joe? Oh, I ain't going to kill you, Marshal. No, sirree. I'm just going to tie and gag you and leave the job of killing you to them that knows some real fancy ways of getting rid of nosy law dogs like you and your partner. <laughs> Engines. <laughs> Well, Lightning Jim and Whitey seem to have run up against trouble with a vengeance. The thrilling climax of this Lightning Jim adventure will be heard in part two, which follows immediately. And now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim, The Red Man's Range. It is dawn, and in the cellar of the trading post, Lightning Jim and Whitey lie securely gagged and bound. While outside, preparations are being made by Ken Tuck and the Snodgrasses to commence the day's trek southward. If any old hat, the bonnets or cap, be sure and give oh, me to the poor. Oh, for land's sake, how long are you going to keep up that terrible caterwauling, Ev? Oh, gosh, all hemlock, Morty. Can't a man be happy for two minutes without you jumping down his throat? Well, it's your own fault if I'm out of humor, Ev Snodgrass. I idea you agreeing to pay that old robber $25 when I'd have had him shaved down to 20 if you'd have let me be. <laughs> When your pa was laid away, you was sorry you hadn't married the undertaker so as you could save the price of the burying. And now I wish, I suppose you're wishing I was the engine fighter. <laughs> Matter of fact, I kind of wish it myself. Ah, oh, you an engine fighter. That's good. Why, the very first war hoop, you'd jump 15 ways, Ab's not there. I would not. And that's not counting up. But speaking of engine fighters, where's that old fool Ken Tuck? Ken Tuck! Oh, Ken Tuck! Coming! I'm coming! Uh, you folks all set to go? Yes, already. About time you were showing up. You might as well understand right here and now that we ain't aiming to spend our good money for you to go romping off your own devices every whip stick. Now get your horse and let's get started. Uh, sorry to hold you up, ma'am, but the fact of the matter is I'm kind of worried about them two marshals. Been trying to locate which way they're headed, but can't find area track. Don't seem to make a difference which way they went. They're gone, ain't they? Sure, Kentuck. And Rappaho Joe said they pulled out about an hour before dawn. Saw myself. Then hey, why can't I pick up the trail? Hmm. There's Joe now. Hey, Rappaho. Yeah? What time did you say them marshals pulled up stakes this morning? Oh, along about an hour before dawn, I reckon. Hmm. Kind of early for you to be up, wanted. Oh, I wasn't up. They wake me. I wanted to buy something the trading post before they left. Hmm. Funny I didn't hear them. What did they buy? Oh, for land's sake, what difference does it make what they bought? Get your horse. Ah, just a minute, ma'am. What did you say they bought Rappaho? Hey, it was uh, uh, tobacco, that's what it was. The big fellow wants some tobacco. Now, let me get this straight, Rappaho. You're trying to tell me that Lightning Jim woke you up to buy some tobacco before he left this morning. Is that right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Where's those marshals, Rappaho? Well, I don't know where they was. Along the trail somewhere, I reckon. I said, where's them marshals? I, I, I'm telling you straight, Kentucky. I ain't no nursemaid for a couple of tin stars. Oh, of course he ain't, Kentuck. What's the matter with you? Listen, ma'am, this coot's cold deck, them marshals, just as sure as I'm standing here. Lightning Jim never uses tobacco no time, smoking or chewing. Now I'd give you one more chance to spill it, Joe. You gonna talk? I tell you, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing to say. Get your hands up, you uh, skunk. Uh, there. Now, Ab, get his gun. Sure, Kentuck. Now, start walking, Rappahoo. Uh, where are you taking me? What are you gonna do to me? I ain't messed around Indians all my life without learning some good ways of getting the man's mouth to work in Rappahoe. 
But they don't exactly make pleasant watching for a lady. So get going. <laughs> Then you won't get loose the prey anymore of your oh, rotten right. grip. No, Mr. Oh. Arapaho, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Not with you tying them up if you want, Maud. <laughs> Nothing's ever got away from you yet, by the way. Dad, your female hide? Go easy there. There you are. That'll hold, I reckon. Well, I'd say there was one thing you ain't been saving with, Maudie, and that's our rope. Why, Eb Snodgrass, you don't think I'm planning on letting this here good hemp rope get away from us, do you? Not on your life, I ain't. We're going right to the jail when them marshals turn this low down prairie and we're going to get a rope back. That's what we're going to do. Here comes Kentucky with them lawmen now. Well, I see Rappaho Joe weren't lying when he told you where you could locate them marshals, Kentucky. Yeah, men ain't likely to lie under the kind of persuasion I used on Rappaho Joe, Ab. Well, I see you got a prisoner all trussed up and ready for the hangman, Mrs. Snodgrass. Yeah, I took care of Rappaho Joe right enough, Marshal. But what I'm wanting to know is just when this famous guy and engine fighter we hired is going to start doing something about getting us in a wagon and start on the trail for Fort Laramie. Listen, ma'am, there's a load of firearms inside that trading post, and if the engines what bought them get their hands on them guns, well, you nor none of the rest of us would ever see Fort Laramie. Sure, that's right, Lightning, and we got to start doing something right to me. By golly, there's no telling how soon them red devils will come after the stuff. Engines? Come in here. Well, why are we standing around then? We got to get out here. Hold on there, Ab. About how many braves does War Cloud have, Rappaho? Well, how would I know? Out of the way, Lightning. I'll get an answer for you. No, 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 no. Keep that bloodthirsty old coon away from me. Marshal, I'll, I'll talk. Well, that's better. Well, War Cloud's got, well, anyway, 50, maybe 100 or more in his camp. But he ain't likely to bring them all here after the guns. A Fifty or a hundred? You don't believe any lightning. Why, we couldn't hold out more than a couple of hours against that many reds. Metal, we can't hold out against them, buddy. But there's one thing we can do. We can see them redskins don't get the guns and ammunition. Lightning. Are you about finished on here in the saddle, huh? Just about, buddy. Sure, he's to blow up all this ammunition. It's the only way to keep them red devils from getting their hands on it. Well, I just hope they don't get their hands on us instead. Yeah, hold this lantern up high for me, will you, buddy? No. But see, what to do, you know? I'm going to run this long fuse from that barrel of gunpowder I just opened out through this crack in the wall, buddy. You oh, see, that's a good idea. Then we can sprinkle a trail of gunpowder from the end of the fuse to a safe distance away. Can Tuck watching out for the Indians, buddy? Oh, he's keeping watch, all right. And the covered wagon is hid out of sight in a clump of cotton was back at a trading Good. Post. And our horses. They're back to two. And Kentucky left orders for Maud and Snodgrass to stay out of sight in the wagon till he was ready. Yours in the wagon, too. Good. There. That's got it. Now we fill our hats with gunpowder. Wait, oh. wait! They're coming! Indians! Indians? Yeah! yeah. Quick, buddy! I'm the back way, man! Indians! Come on. Yeah, hurry up, Doc! Come on, no time to sprinkle the gunpowder now, buddy. Joe, sure. sure. I'll see there in. Hey. The wagon's hid back a ways, but we can see what's happening better from here. Yeah, no, see, look at that former redskin. They'll get their ammunition all right. Hey, we like Sam Hill. I'm going to sneak back there and light that fuse while they're busy at the front there. No, you ain't lightning. If anybody's going to back to light that fuse, that's going to be me. I'm the best one to go, lightning. My bucks can close and give me a better chance of getting back there without being no, seen. No, I can't let either one of you be young and run the risk. I'm going back there. No, oh, well, I can run the fastest lightning, and the fuse is so short that... Hey, come down. Come down. Come back here. Can talk. Well, it's too talk. late, buddy. By golly, she won't ever be able to get out of the way after a fuse has slipped. Not so loud. Look, it's almost there. Reckon them Indians ain't expecting no trouble. So they've seen him before this. See, see, look. Looks like he's lighting a few snow lights. Yeah. By golly, there will be lots of them Indians blown up along with the horse. Yeah. They see him, my dear. Run for it, you duck. Run for it. Take over. Hurry. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. I made it, man. Good fellow, Kentuck. Look, the Indians have left. They're on the run. Yeah. No, but see, they're stopping. He ain't leaving for good. See? Yeah. This is going to be bad, man. Like as not, they'll draw a cordon around us and send a rider back for the rest of the tribe before attack. Sure, oh, our goose is cooking off for sure. Yeah. Easy, Thunder. Thunder. Steady, boy. Hey, hey, what you getting in a horse for, Lightning? Ride to Fort Laramie for the troops, buddy. Oh, but you can't do that, Lightning. You never make it. The Indians will get you for sure. Yeah, Whitey's right, Lightning. You ain't got one chance in a thousand to get them past them savages. Lightning, you can't do that. That's too 
suicide. It's massacre if I don't get through, Whitey. And if there's any horse in the world that can make it, it's thunder. Let's go thunder! Almost just. Not a sign of a red skin yet. Yeah, but there's a saying amongst us old timers, ma'am. When you see Indian signs, be careful. And when you don't see no Indian signs, be twice as careful. You're besides to set dark skin don't let them red skins start the trouble. Wait, do you think lightning Jim got through them Indians? Yes, I wish I knew too, Eb. We heard the Indians shooting at them, but we couldn't tell whether he got past them or not. Yeah, the sun's going down, folks. Reckon we better get to our post. Now, don't forget, Miss Nodgrass, you and Ab get under the wagons and shoot from there. Yes, I got it. We'll arrest the guns and the wagons, folks, so better aim. All right, come along, Ab. Dear Dior, now look to your aim and don't waste your lead. Yeah, they'll stop in a circle and draw closer each time they make the round. Fight your guns accordingly. <laughs> But can talk here, he's hurt bad. That ain't a word of truth what he's saying, Lightning. Shucks, I just took in a little lead, that's all. <laughs> well, according to the tales they tell about you, Kentuck, you're toting around a fortune in lead in that big bony frame of yours already. <laughs> no, and what's more, can talk you. They say that somewhere around inside of you, you are packing a silver bullet. Good work, Marshal. It came just in time, Marshal. For God's sake, don't let that female hear you talking about all this. Why not? Listen, Lightning, that darn female is so thrifty that were she to know I had a silver bullet in me, she'd get a knife and start mining for it right here and now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lightning. Let's go to the post. And so ends another thrilling adventure in the lives of United States Marshal Lightning Jim Whipple and his equally famous deputy, Whitey Larson. Mm -hmm.